Today we're going to be actually doing a acid-base neutralization reaction and we're going to be doing a couple of them and we're going to be doing them multiple times um, and what we're going to be doing is first figuring out the concentration of our base secondly using that base to figure out the concentration of an acid now here's the thing when you make up a new solution even if you're really careful with the masses and the volumes it's hard to know for sure if you have the right thing so what we need to do is we need to standardize it and particularly for our base here sodium hydroxide because what it does is it absorbs water out of the air so when I put 50 grams of sodium hydroxide on the balance some of that most of that 50 grams is actually sodium hydroxide but some of that mass is water that's absorbed out of the air and when I put it on the balance I could tell that it looked kind of shiny as if it was a little bit damp or moist or wet. So what we're going to do is I made up a solution where I think I have a pretty close to target concentration but I don't know so I need to confirm that I need to standardize it and I know I'll be close but not quite. What I'm going to use for that is something that I know for sure and that is going to be a mass of a solid acid. So I'm going to take an acid called potassium hydrogen phthalate and uh, molecular formula is here. I'll put that, uh, it, make sure that that's easy enough to see for you because you're going to need not only the molecular formula, you're going to need the molar mass of that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to measure out a mass of potassium hydrogen phthalate. Now I'm going to shorten it to KHP, however you need to know that while the K and the H might stand for potassium and hydrogen, the P absolutely does not stand for potassium, or for uh, phosphorus. It stands for phthalate and that's a much bigger formula. So what we'll do is we'll measure out some potassium hydrogen phthalate and I'm not going to measure it directly into the flask. I have a container that contains potassium hydrogen phthalate already and I'm going to find out what I've got to start. I'll pour some into my flask and then I'll find out what I have afterwards and then by subtraction I'll find the mass. Then I'm going to what's called titrate using sodium hydroxide where I will find a volume uh, and then I will titrate to the end point and I'll find another volume and then that will tell me how much I've used. Now I'll show you some details as we go through. Because um, we we want to uh, try this three times and then take the average because I don't know if the first one I'll, I'll be absolutely correct. I want to, if you think back when we talked about accuracy and precision, I want to do it three times and if all three of my results are very close to each other, then I'll be confident that the work I've done is correct. Alright, we're going to see if we can show you some of the, the basic equipment that we're using today. So, uh, my acid to start is going to be in this flask. Uh, and I need to keep things moving along. Normally what I'll do is I'll just hold the flask and swirl it, but I actually have a magnetic stirrer uh, and that's going to do that work for me. Just to the other side of it is a burette. And I'm going to have trouble focusing on it, but here's the, the working end of the burette. And the burette is a long or tall tube uh, that has graduations on it, markings on it, and I probably cannot focus on those. But one of the things that's interesting about a burette is that the zero volume marker is at the top and down at the bottom there will be a 50. I don't know if that's any better. So 50 at the bottom and zero at the top. And the reason for that is that the burette does not measure how much is in the burette. It measures how much I've put let out of the burette because down at the bottom of the burette is this valve assembly and using that if I turn that uh, 90 degrees from where it is right now then the burette will be fully open and liquid in the burette will come out. Uh, typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have base in the burette and the acid in the flask. Now my first volume which I can actually use right now and put on my data table is not at zero and it doesn't actually matter for two reasons. Number one, uh, I'm actually kind of lazy and it couldn't be bothered to get it to the zero mark. The other thing is as long as I know the first volume and the second volume then I, all I do is subtract them and I will know how much base I actually used. 
So I've taken my first mass of solid acid and uh, on the balance, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some in. It doesn't matter really how much I put in. There's sort of two things that are going to be important. One is that I don't have so much that it won't all dissolve, uh, and the other is that I can actually have enough that I can measure my, my uh, base properly with the reaction. Then I put it back on the balance and find the second mass, which is 34.201. And then by subtracting those two numbers, I will know how much base I added to the acid. No, sorry, how much acid I added to the flask. We'll add that out. Then what I need to do is add, add an indicator. The indicator that we use is called phenylphthalein. I'll put the spelling uh, in there with. And as an indicator, what it does, three drops is enough. Uh, what it does is it's going to change color when we hit the, what's called the equivalence point or the neutralization point. And it's going to go from having no color at all to being a, a bright red. Now what I want to do is stop it at the faint pink, and we'll get to there uh, in a minute. Uh, then I'm going to turn on the magnetic stirrer because I'm too lazy to swirl it. And that's going to keep everything mixing well. All right, so what's going on now is I've got the acid mixing with the indicator in it. I'm going to start to add the base. Now I don't know how much base I need to add, so I'm going to add it fairly slowly. But I also want to show you uh, what happens when we do add it. So I'm opening up the valve on the burette fairly slowly, and when the base hits the acid mixture in the flask, it turns pink. It turns pink where there is a lot of base, where the pH has gone into the basic range. As it reacts with acid, then that pink will disappear. What we're looking for is a persistent pink. So I'm going to just keep doing this until I get it. Okay, so I've titrated it to, uh, I would like to have a fainter pink than this, so I'm a little bit past the part where I should be. I'll try this again, I'll show you a picture that works a little bit better. Um, I took my second volume measurement, uh, I'll post a picture of that. Uh, I estimated it to be about 6.28. I, I can do the 6.2 part really well, those are the graduations, and, but it was, not, it was almost 0.3, but not quite, so I'm estimating it to be 6.28. So from here, I can figure out how much acid was in the flask. Using the molar mass, I can figure out how, much, how many moles that was. Uh, and then I can use the volume difference to find out how many milliliters of base I used. And then what it comes down to is that one mole of acid reacted with one mole of base. So the number of moles of solid acid would be equal to the number of moles of base. From there, I can use it to figure out the concentration of base.